The price to earnings ratio. How much do you pay for one rupee of a company's earnings? This is what the price to earnings ratio or PE ratio tells us. For example, a stock with a PE ratio of 20 means you are paying 20 rupees for one rupee of earnings. The PE ratio is the most widely used measure of a stock's value. The higher the PE, the more you are paying for a rupee of earnings and the more expensive the stock. PE ratios come in two flavors. First, the trailing PE uses the prior 12 months of earnings. And second, the forward PE uses the expected earnings for the next 12 months. The forward PE is usually a better indicator, but is more uncertain since future earnings have to be estimated. PE ratios are used for two purposes. The first is to compare similar stocks, for example, two stocks in the same industry. The stock with the lower P.E. ratio is cheaper and could be a better investment. The second is to compare a stock or index with itself over time. If the P.E. ratio is low relative to its historical levels, that is a potential buy signal. That said, using the P.E. ratio has its pitfalls. If you see a stock with low P.E., think about why the P.E. is low. If it's low because the outlook for the company is poor, for example, earnings are going to fall, then you should avoid that stock. Now, the PE could be low because prices are temporarily down. For example, market sentiment may be bearish. If the company's earnings are solid, then you may have a bargain on your hands. These are exactly the kind of stocks the Equity Master research team looks for. The price earnings ratio formula is as follows. It is the market price per share divided by the earnings per share. The market price per share is simply the stock price. If you want the trailing PE, the earnings per share can be found on the most recent income statement. If you want the forward PE, you use estimated future earnings per share. Let's take a look at an example of Bajaj Auto's P.E. ratio. Suppose Bajaj Auto's current stock price is Rs. 3,135 and their most recent earnings per share is Rs. 134. Using our formula gives us a P.E. ratio of 3,135 divided by 134 equal to 23.4. How does the P.E. ratio compare with other indicators such as price to book value or price to sales? When we buy shares in a company, we are buying into their future earnings. After all, earnings is what is left for investors once all expenses are paid. Thus, the P.E. ratio is usually the most relevant for investors. However, there may be cases where other indicators are more useful. For example, if a company is close to liquidation, that is, when all assets are sold off and liabilities are paid, the price to book value is the better indicator. This is because if a company is liquidated and stops operating, shareholders are left with the book value of the firm. One downside of the P.E. ratio is that earnings can be manipulated. One-off charges, depreciation, accruals, and various accounting anomalies can impact the bottom line. On the other hand, sales or revenues are more difficult to manipulate. The price-to-sales ratio is cleaner than the price-to-earnings ratio and can be a better indicator of the company's overall health. This is especially important if we are trying to gauge underlying, underlying demand for the firm's product. If there is a big divergence between the P.E. and P.S. ratio, this could be a sign that the reported earnings are not reliable. Sometimes the P.E. ratio can be of no use at all. If a company makes losses, earnings are negative, and then so is the P.E. ratio. A negative P.E. ratio has no useful interpretation. 
When this happens, you should use other indicators such as price to book value or price to sales. In the live data section, you can find the stocks with the most attractive PE ratios. And finally, please take a moment to read through this disclaimer.